This is some kind of weird food art. There's something in there? Of course. It's a bomb. In my home country, we Americans love chicken. Together, Americans eat 8 billion chickens every year. Oh my God. But beyond chicken, there's not a lot of bird eating going on in the USA. Sure, we dabble in turkey too, but that narrow selection is nothing compared to what you'll find in Vietnam. Whether farm raised or caught in the wild. Oh, no. oh God. Folks here can't get enough. Cooking up bird species I'd never find on a dinner plate back home. Well, you could eat any bird you wanted. Yeah. That is wild. Today, we're trying out three vastly different bird dishes with three different price tags attached. From super affordable to surprisingly expensive. Around $1,000 for one bird. A meal fit for a king. All of them cooked up in ways you have never seen before. The head coming out of the body? Time to find out which bird is the best bang for your buck. Win! Hi, can we? <laughs> all the time. Today is all about birds. I'm disappointed by the lack of edible bird species in the USA. Chicken is the number one star. Turkey after that. You can find duck, but it's not that common. Are they technically that's birds? It. Do you know what a bird is? Here in Vietnam, we have a specific word for a bird. It's like everything that flies. What is a chicken? We just call it chicken. Anything with feathers that, that lays eggs is a bird. And today we're going to have some brand new stuff I've never even heard of before. We're going cheap. We're going middle price. We're going very expensive. Our very expensive bird, I guarantee you've never seen it before. And you folks at home have Absolutely not seen this bird. Awesome. Let's go. Sir, put her there. Yeah, that's right. Duan is the owner of Jim Choi Restaurant, an affordable avian eatery in Hanoi, specializing in birds. Their menu features 10 different bird species. The most popular dish is also the head chef's own unique creation, and he calls it the, the no, no exit, exit dog. As far as I know, a dove is pretty much the same thing as a pigeon, but I think in the US, if it's kind of white, if it's a symbol of peace, we call it a dove. <laughs> yeah. And if it's something that eats trash in New York, we call it a pigeon. Like most bird dishes, the animal is dispatched, feathered, and clean. Are these doves from the wild? <laughs> then it boils for about eight minutes. Can you tell the difference between a farm-raised pigeon and a pigeon that's just been eating trash in the park? Now it gets wild. The one that raised by farmers would be pretty bigger in size. Really? This juicy bird is wrapped inside a thick shell of well-seasoned sticky rice, hence the name No Exit Dove. I thought these street pigeons are eating like KFC, McDonald's, the ones in New York can hardly walk. This winged work of art is then deep fried until the sticky rice becomes a crispy golden brown egg with the bird inside ready to hatch once more. <laughs> It looks like a giant egg is confusing. Like you can't just take a bite out of it like an apple because you're going to hit the skull or something. You're going to chip your teeth. You're like, oh, it's a head looking at me. Oh, okay, I think he knows what to do. Can you help us here? He's using the scissors to cut through it. He's only cutting the outer shell. Oh. Wow. What a reveal. I want this for my next birthday. What? It's a head coming out of the body. Crazy. Come on. The dove is a symbol of peace, and right now it's in many pieces. I think we start by trying some of the sticky rice, and sop up this peanut and salt. This is the perfect snack. It's so good. It just has that fried sticky rice taste to it. Not a strong taste at all. Beautiful creation in every way. The dove, very dark meat, kind of greasy, oily, real fresh. The skin is still on here, and then the meat, it looks juicy, tender, full of fat. So here, I just had a big piece of breast meat, which on a chicken is usually white and dry and boring. Wait, am I describing myself right now? <laughs> so usually on a chicken, the breast is gonna be the least exciting part. But here, even the breast is just super juicy. I'm gonna put some of this peanut salt, some wing meat, and then I got a little open-faced sandwich. Oh my god, I'm excited. You really know how to eat. That sticky rice is so delectable that you could eat it without the pigeon. The bird is a nice touch. <laughs> Oh wait, we came here for the bird. 10 out of 10. Very so high. these other restaurants are gonna have to bring their egg game and their best bird squad. <laughs> Why is that so funny? I don't know. They just like hang out together. I just imagine like, a bunch of hey. superhero birds. Our next restaurant seems like a mini bird zoo in disguise. Hey, it looks like a duck. Pet more in the front by the mouth part. That's a duck bite. <laughs> <laughs> Ducks have fangs. This is Chung, the owner of Bin An Restaurant. His selection of birds is 100% wild caught. Here, Chung has around 18 to choose from. 
At this point, I'm starting to realize that this type of restaurant is a thing. What is the biggest one that you have? He can even get the ostrich. What about a penguin? Not that I would eat one, but some people are curious. <laughs> what is the most popular bird that people eat here? The most popular one can be the heron. Herons are long-legged birds that dwell in shallow, fresh, or brackish water. They usually hunt at night and feed mainly on fish. These highly mobile and majestic creatures can be found in many parts of Europe, Africa, and Asia. They're available in northern Vietnam during the migratory season, which, lucky for us, happens to be right now. The staff would bring the bird if you order one, then they would, um, it sounds really cruel, but they would cut the throat right there, so you will get the blood coming out right at the table. <laughs> are people eating the blood like uh, Diet Gan? Yeah, Diet Gan. Oh, look at how excited you are. <laughs> well, Diet Gan. Diet Gan, or raw blood pudding, is a popular drinking food in Vietnam, but it's not for the faint of heart. The bird gizzard is steamed and minced with fresh shallots. Then fresh blood is diluted with water and fish sauce. Add the two together and it'll set to a jello-like consistency. I never thought when I started this career I would have eaten as much raw blood as I've eaten. This is like my sixth <laughs> animal at this point. You smell that? How does it smell? Blood? <laughs> my lord. Ah, dang it. Sorry. That wasn't good. Usually you put some herbs and then of course some lime together with some peanuts here to wash away that kind of raw blood smell. So everything we're doing is uh, an attempt to not actually taste or experience <laughs> the food. All right, let's get a spoonful. It's like a really neatly organized crime scene. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm not hating this. I really like the chewy organs. They have a, a great consistency. Everything goes really well together. Oh, right, I'm gonna take one more micro bite. Uh-huh. It's only get easier from here. Yeah, so each we... bite gets a little easier, a little more palatable. I'm taking another bite. No, yeah. great. I'm ready for the main course. Oh. Oh, fantastic. The heron, torched and soaked with a rice wine and ginger mixture to reduce any gamey flavors. Then it's cut into bite-sized pieces and sauteed with garlic and lemongrass. The broth goes in, stir. MSG, stir. Star fruit, stir. Sugar, stir. Silky fermented rice, stir some more. Then one last touch, red chilies and scallions to turn up the flavor. All this is served in a special hot pot to keep the food warm. Traditional hot pot. They've got chilies on top. It's nice. It looks like a little flower blooming, making itself vulnerable to the world. Visually, very nice. The meat is very dark. All of it's super dark. What is that bowl? Oh, it's the head. Here, 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 here. That's the brain. Is that the eyeball? You can have the eye. <laughs> okay. Thoughtful. A very drumstick. Yeah, keep that. This bird never works out, huh? Should we try the drumsticks first? Let's do. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sorry, <laughs> it's totally going in your face. That's real chewy. It's spicy. It's fatty as well. It's got some kind of nice greasiness to it. I'm trying to eat in an elegant way. <laughs> yeah, you look super elegant. <laughs> These are some big, succulent-looking pieces of meat. Nutritious, natural meat. It's not just been eating a bunch of corn and BS. It's been eating insects and other wild creatures out in the swamp. I also ate insects once. Your muscles <laughs> look like this. All right, so I think this is uh, some kind of super dark breast meat. Cheers. Mm. I can't believe I'm eating a bird. It tastes like buffalo meat or something. Mm. It's really chewy. It has like a, a real wild taste to it. Not gamey, but you can just tell it's not from a factory farm. It's from some guy's trap. Is that another drumstick? The legs are so long, it's like a two drumstick deal. Oof, a lot of work, yeah. It hit me like a rubber band. I think the presentation is good. They make a really a big meal out of it. You could bring four people here and share that one little bird. And everyone's just gonna get really like a couple good meaty bites. Mm, but that said enough to make you pray for it. Bird number two, you did a great job. Thank you, bird. I thought you were talking to me. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. You did pretty good too. Before our final ultra expensive bird meal, we're heading here, a bird sanctuary, which doubles as a market for folks who wish to buy exotic pets or cook up some exotic cuisine. Between those two outcomes, I'm here to figure out where that line really is. Sir, you are the bird man. It's nice to meet you. Juan is the manager here at one of the first privately owned wild bird farms in Vietnam. There are roughly 600 birds being raised in this eight acre aviary. Right now, we're hanging out with the peacocks, which range in price from $300 to 
to nearly $1,000 for the all-white variety. In Vietnam, where is the line? What birds are okay to eat? So he said it would depend on the price. Even peacock, back in the day, the king would eat this as like a premium kind of meat. Oh my gosh, kings were lavish AF back then. <laughs> Do people still eat peacock now? Now, like people rarely eat them. Rarely? <laughs> it's not the same as don't. What is the most expensive bird you know of that people do actually eat? The Eurasian teal. The Eurasian teal is a freshwater bird with distinct black feathers, a white beak, and these special looking feet. In Vietnam, adult Eurasian teals usually weigh up to 1.5 pounds, and they're considered one of the most luxurious avian proteins money can buy. How much do you sell them for? Why is it so expensive? It's pretty rare, only available in certain areas in Vietnam. You're saying it's rare, but you guys breed them here, right? Like chickens are super easy to raise. With the Eurasian teal, are you having trouble making them um, <laughs> make more babies? Yeah. Every year, they would give birth like two times. So pretty easy to, to breed, actually. I don't get why it's so expensive. To find out more, we're heading to Bird 306 to meet with the manager, Dia. Hello. Hello. Cool. Why don't you look at my hand? Do people not shake your hand usually? <laughs> she said because of COVID, then she would limit that a little. I washed my hands yesterday. Yeah, cool. So. <laughs> Bird 306 is one of the most famous bird restaurants in the north of Vietnam. As expected, the Eurasian teal is the most expensive option on their menu. The price can rocket to over $100 per bird when they're out of season. Why are people willing to pay so much money for it? I don't get it. I can't figure it out. This is actually a bird that used to be served to the king in Vietnam. Kings in the days of old loved these birds for one reason, their nutrition. In the past, wild Eurasian teals usually grazed on a type of precious lotus flower found in Hanoi. Lotus. Legend has it, their little bird bodies were brimming with lotus nutrition. I love nutrition! Due to overhunting, most of these birds are now farm-raised and fed a diet of ginseng in lieu of lotus. The most nutrition part of this bird is actually in the blood. It's really good. Is she trying to bully us into eating the raw blood? She said yes, you should try. All right. Oh my god, I'm gonna shoot you. Hey, this is your culture. Our second blood pudding of the day. Let's make it quick. Gizzard, minced pork, pork cartilage, thorny coriander, and fried shallots. Let it set, then serve, then a quick bite. I think it's pretty smooth. As far as raw blood cake goes, two bloody thumbs up for me. Our final meal, the most expensive and apparently nutritious dish of the day. I'm just a man who can be trusted. After being cleaned, the bird is soaked with cashew nut oil and torched to remove any gamey flavors. Out of the darkness and into the fire. Radish, lotus roots, mushrooms, and eight types of traditional medicines are boiled and seasoned, then joined by the premium bird meat and stewed for about 20 minutes. Blanched mugwort is placed atop as a final touch. Now, our first class Eurasian teal pot is ready to eat. Oh! I, I didn't smell anything. Hold on. Ooh! Mm, I like it. It smells like the medicine section of a market. It smells like Chinatown. Can I say that? That's a leg. You can have that. Freaking liver? It's blood. Cooked blood. Yeah, cooked blood. Ooh, I'll take that. Potato with holes in it. <laughs> it's a lotus root. Oh, jeez! What the? I didn't expect that. They could have made this into a keychain or something. I'm gonna start with this. I got a sheet of blood. You got an organ over there. Cheers. doesn't taste that much different from the one from chicken. My blood cake is good. It's just soaked up all these Chinese medicinal herb flavors, kind of earthy flavor. This pot is screaming nutrition to me. Wow. Mmm, fatty, rich, and deep. This has this natural, like, sweet taste to it. It's not, like, from sugar. Where's the meat? Oh, here's a little bit of meat. I got a drummy right here. We can start putting this bird back together. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, wow. What the hell? I feel like I'm eating fish ribs. Not overly flavorful, a little chewy. It's also like a dark meat, but just not as rich and fatty. Those bites that we just had was like $20 worth of food. There's nothing to this bird. It's so tiny. Once you take the feathers away, it's like a wet cat. Nothing, yeah. Mm. Really this nice. This red meat is very good. Much more fatty. 
That's the wing. Imagine if they made buffalo wings like that. It just skins, basically. Oh, you know what, though? This is a bird of flight, and it can't be too heavy. It can't be weighed down like all of our, like, steroid birds in the <laughs> USA. Our steroided chickens are like, we're not flying anywhere. We can get jacked. And they talk like that. Their voice gets really deep. Bop, bop, motherfucker. <laughs> Tell me this kind of voice, too. I think this bird would sound like you. <laughs> Yeah, like that. Oh, is this the fucking heart? Some rare bird heart. Let's go for it. What am I eating? Mm. I wish that I can say the same thing like, mm, but I can. <laughs> that heart's delicious. I wish I had too. Very livery. It's like a grape skin filled with chicken pate. The parts with meat are good, but you really have to hunt for it. This is the type of meal where by the end, every bone would be picked dry and there would be absolutely nothing left but just some fossils. Can you believe that they serve this to the king? The king be like, <laughs> Right. All the places we went to today, they're all doing like a full bird immersion experience. But each place still had their own style, their own creativity, their own, what's the third adjective? Style, creativity, methods of making it delicious. Now is the part of the video where we choose which one was the best value for the amount of money that we, that I paid. We're gonna say at the same time this time, I've never done this before. One, two, three, location one. one. <laughs> yes. Yes, that was, the best. I was so excited when he cut that part and then he like revealed there's a bird inside and then he revealed inside the bird is the head. One goal of this show is to challenge you as a viewer and your notion of what's normal. If you didn't see the footage of how this got put together, you would have no idea how this was done. Is it normal for Americans to eat 8 billion genetically modified super chickens per year? He said the full chicken might be too much, but I don't think so. Or in the scope of humanity, is it maybe more normal for someone to hunt down their own wild game? He said he never sell like frozen birds. They're all alive. Then use every part of the animal, stewing its bones, beak, feet, and protein with vegetables so that not a single calorie is wasted. What part of the bird is this? I know now Nowadays, which of these is more common? But you can't tell me. What folks are doing here isn't normal. From researching and shooting to editing and mastering, our 10-person Best Ever Food Review Show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Thank you for joining us, and thank you to Twin for being here. And this is her Instagram handle here. That is it for this one. We will see you next time. A peace.